G'day, I'm James. There's currently a lot of internet controversy over the area model. In fact, I'd like to explain what the area model is very briefly and five objections to it. Here are my five objections. Here's the area model, but first, what is the area model? Well, the beginning approach to this is the way to understand multiplication. For example, if I need to do multiplication 37 times 23, the area model says, don't think of this as an arithmetic problem, think of this as a geometry problem. I mean, for example, take a rectangle that is 37 inches long and 23 inches high and ask, what's the area of that rectangle? Well, to compute the area of that rectangle, I need to work out 37 times 23. Okay, so it actually is the same problem. Now, of course, no one likes the numbers 37 and 23. In fact, let's avoid hard work. Let's make the 37 friendly. And my brain suddenly says right now, okay, let's think of this as 30 inches and 7 inches, something like that. Oh, sorry, my picture's not drawn to scale. I hope that's okay. And let's make the 23 much simpler. 23 is awkward. Let's make it, I don't know, the obvious thing in my brain right now is 20 and 3 inches. Again, not drawn to scale, but the idea is there. All right, so if I want to work at the area of this rectangle, then I just work at the area of each of the individual pieces. And I've now made my multiplication problems much simpler. 30 times 20 would be 600. Uh, 7 times 20 is 140. Uh, 3 times 30 is 90. And 3 times 7 is 21. So the area of this rectangle must be the sum of these pieces. What's 600 plus 140? That makes 740. Plus 90 makes 830. Plus 21 makes 851. This must be 851. Beautiful. That's the area model. All right. So what are the objections? Well, I said earlier on they're my objections, but they're actually not. These are the objections I'm seeing on the comments when people are looking at videos on the area model. That the issue is the speed, this is impractical, this is useless, why fix something that's not broken, and this is just new math. All right, so let me go through each of these and think about what, what, what's, what are the issues here? Speed, speed. All right, so if the issue is speed, that I need to work this out with speed in my life, then think about where we are in this day and age. We're in the 21st century. If I actually need to know what 37 times 23 is on the spot in everyday life, I would do this as a smart thinking adult. Pull up my smartphone. So if speed to getting answers is the issue, this is the correct 21st century approach. Which then begs the question, what do we need to teach our students? Now, of course, you're going to balk at the idea of using calculators and smartphones. Fine, so we want to teach the kids arithmetic. I get that. But it can't be for speed then. Smartphones are the way we actually deal with this in everyday life. So you might say, okay, drawing rectangles takes too long. All right, fair enough. But of course you're not going to draw rectangles every single time. We're not asking students to always draw rectangles. The fact is, I've got this in my head. I can almost see in my head now what 37 times 23 is going to be by thinking of a rectangle. Just imagine a rectangle. 30 and 7, 20 and 3, and I can see all those pieces. I get a 600 piece, I get a 21 piece, I get a 90 piece, I get a 140. I can actually do it in my head. So if speed's the issue, having that imagery in my brain actually helps me get the answer in, 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 uh, quickly. All right, speed, I would argue, is not actually the concern here. Now, impractical, that's a good question. So um, is this impractical? Well, the question is what your goal is here. Now, I've taught a way to do a multiplication problem, which actually has ramifications all the way through the K through 12 curriculum. We forget that our students, our youngsters, are actually going through a whole storyline of math. They might be in grade four now, but they're going to go to middle school, they're going to go to high school. Math keeps going, and actually, this is very practical for the upper level grades. For example, in middle school, students at some point are going to have to do things with mixed numbers, like multiply four and a half times uh, five and a third. It's very, very tempting to say the answer must be 4 times 5 is 20, and half times a third is a sixth, so there must be 20 and a sixth. But if you have this imagery in your mind, you'll see right away, ooh, ooh, working with these mixed numbers is not quite right. 4 and a half, yes, here's 4, here's half. 5 and a third, here's 5 and a third. I do indeed get 20 from the 4 times 5. I can see that in my brain. I do indeed get a sixth, a half times a third is one sixth but I can see that my computation is wrong. I'm missing extra pieces. So actually having the imagery in your mind can help with more complicated arithmetic. So the goal here is not to just answer integer multiplication problems, to give a structure that goes beyond. In fact, in high school, it gets even worse. You do algebra. Whoops, making my board messy. Messy board and smudgy hand. A very common student mistake in algebra class for high school is to say that a quantity squared, a plus b squared, is a squared plus b squared. That seems very, very tempting to say. I get that. However, 
We even say a geometry word. We just said the word square. Let's draw a square. Here it is. It's going to be a plus b inches by a plus b inches. Okay, a plus b inches by a plus b inches. And yes, I do see I get an a times a piece, a squared. I do see I get a b times b piece, a b squared. But I see I'm missing another a times b and a times b. Actually, this facilitates high school algebra. Plus 2ab is the correct answer. I can see it in my picture. So building up this area model for youngsters, the goal is not so much working out the computations 37 times 23, that's not the goal, to actually give a structure for the mathematics that comes beyond in the whole storyline and help with arithmetic along the way. All right, impractical. Useless. Useless. That's a good question. Is it useless? Let me just get my erase. I need to clean my board. Well, the question is, what's its goal? Well, at the early grades, it's probably a pedagogical one about teaching. For example, we... I think in our day, we were taught to do multiplication like this. Long multiplication, you go, what, right to left? By the way, that's odd, because in every class, we teach kids to read left to right, but in math class, we go right to left. Okay? You write 3 times 7 is 21. I don't think you write 21. I think you just write 1 and put a 2 up there. You go 3 times 3 is 9, plus another 2 makes 11. I think is what you do. 2 times 7 is 14, but you have to put a 0 here, and you write 14 and a 1. 2 times 3 is uh, uh, 6, plus another 1 makes 7. So the answer must be 851. Okay. That was very complicated, and it's very hard for us adults to not equate familiarity with understanding. We are very familiar with this, therefore we feel we understand it. But imagine teaching that for the very first time. That is very, very hard. In fact, a good pedagogical device would maybe do what I did earlier. Chop a rectangle to 30 and 7, 20 and 3. So then I'll say that 37 times 23 must be a, uh, let's see, a 3 times 3 piece is a 21. A 7 times 3 piece gives me 21. It must be a, a, seven, a 20 times 7 piece, 140. It must be a 3 times uh, 90. Uh, 3 times 30 pieces is 90, and a th uh, 3 times 30, ugh, 20 times 30 piece is 600. And I'm going to add up these areas 1, 5, 8. Uh, oh, what I just did then is actually the area model without actually drawing the rectangle. I just did the long multiplication algorithm. Except in the 1700s, paper and ink was very precious. So they decided they should compact this even more and write this in an even more compact way. In fact, there's the 21 and the 90 makes 111. And this 140 and, six, and 600 makes 740. So they combined all the pieces to make this algorithm use even less ink. So if we want to teach our youngsters why the algorithm works, and I feel like that's an appropriate natural question, of course we know why things work the way they do, um, then this could be a very good way to get there. Great. So its actual use is a pedagogical one. And of course, in the school curriculum, in the end of the day, we want kids to be able to do this in the 21st century. That's interesting. Of course, we're going to encourage them to do this. But this is the path to help them get there. Or it's also the path to help them see what's going on. So when they fumble on this, they've got something to fall back on. That's complicated, that's curious, that's hard. All right, um, practical, useless. Um, why fix uh, something that's not broken? Well, it's actually my point. It's very hard to unpack this. We adults, as I said, equate familiarity with understanding. We don't see how hard this is. So actually, I would argue something can be improved in the math curriculum. Let's not just make this a familiar procedure that we do by rote, let's actually make it something we understand so that when we fumble and flail, we've got something to fall back on. If we're you know, stuck on that desert island without this thing and really need to work out 37 times 23, and we can't remember what you do with those little twos and ones at the top of what got at, which gets added, added where, at least we've got something like this to fall back on and help us out. Actually, that's why I say we need to not, you now it's not that things are broken, I think things can be just dramatically improved. Plus, this connects all the way through high school work as well. And is this new math? No, it's not new math. Scholars and teachers have been thinking about the interconnections between algebra and geometry for centuries, for, the, for millennia even, back in the ancient Greek days. So actually, none of this is new, and it's been in the, in the um, curriculum for many, many decades. What's curious to us is that it gets highlighted on internet videos that go viral, and it seems strange and, and new to us. And change, I understand, is, is you know, very scary. But actually, put in context, it makes a beautiful, uplifting story for mathematics that gives students something to hold on to when they fumble and flail on the complicated things we're going to teach them, and we're still teaching them, don't get me wrong, they're still happening, but it gives some structure and some baseline to it all. So actually, area model, objections, I actually think it's all good.